I kept thinking, is there not something I should do at least to merit all this? Maybe to become holier or give me some years so that I can now know the Bible very well or grow. He said, it has nothing to do with what you do. It has to do with what I have done. I'm the one that justified you. I'm the one that made you worthy. I'm the one that made you qualified. Made you qualified. Look at this scripture, Ephesians 1, 6. Read it for them. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved. He has made us accepted. Who is telling you that you are nobody? You know, you know at the end of it all, I came out of it, I realized that the most important person, the only person that matter, likes me. That's what turned that small bad boy growing. You know, first year, I had gone to join one group in school. I'm telling you. There were a few of us that were juniors, the most of them are senior students. Uh, to go and, and check out how to smoke Igbo and all of that. And you know, you buy the seniors beer and some other things they smoke and they give you protection in school. And I wanted to belong to that. And I joined. And that's how I, I took my first. God did not let me go too far. I don't know what he will become. And so when I, I, I was out of that, another day, he said, we are giving you only two weeks. That's how far you will last. You will come back. They didn't know because nobody can truly know him. Nobody can experience him and still be a football for the enemy to play around. No, 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 no. I didn't have money. Our family went through a lot during that period, but inside me, I was a different person. I felt like I was on top of the world because of these things. And the Lord said, when you study the scripture, don't study because you want to know too much theology or too much knowledge. Study it to discover me for they are there to bear witness of me. I said, what is this? He said, every book there is talking about me. But start with the New Testament and as you read, watch, as you discover me, what you find in me is what is in you. I said, what? I said, I can't preach like this. They would think I'm arrogant. How can I tell people that? He said, that is the same for all my children. You can imagine, these are the kind of simple messages I used to preach. He got the whole school set on fire. Children that are bound with rejection, people that are stammerers that can't speak, and because of that, it's affecting their personality. People that had short legs, one leg is shorter than the other, they get this extra shoe. And you know, some of these deformities, you think it's just physical, it affects the man somehow in cycle. And, and they will believe this, and they will break down. You see them giving their life to Christ, rushing to the altar. Kids. Before we knew it, and that then you see leg, those same legs start growing out. And the Lord was doing this in secondary school to show the little children that he's real. Before we knew it, fire caught the whole school. And then he said, V, V, V. He said, you are valued. This is the one, this is the encounter that changed me. The Holy Spirit came later. Later. I'd finished writing my jam and GC. Do you know that all those healings were happening? The whole school set on fire and I was not speaking in tongues. I didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just revelation of Jesus shook my school to his very foundation. He 
said, you are valued. That's when the Lord explained to me, you, if you've been in Domino City for many good days, you will help me use this statement. That's where I got it from. He said, if you have two products, and you can pay peanuts for one, and you pay so much for the other, which one will you value more? I said, Lord, it's very simple now. It's the one you paid a lot of money that cost you a lot. So based on my understanding of money at that time, you will use something like in Kobo for one and use a million in your currency for the other. He said, for example, if it's a pair of shoes, one cost you a couple of kobos. We used to have coins then, you know, it's not like now. And it's real money when you buy things, like students, you can, you can get along with it. Say so it cost you and you, and then this one cost you in millions. Which of those shoes will you place more value? I said, of course, the one that costs millions. I said, because. And then he said, if somebody wants to borrow things anyhow, which one will you give giving the cheap one? He said to me, now I'm trying to help you see this in monetary value. But the truth is, the greatest price that could ever be paid for any commodity was paid for you. So, the greatest value that the Almighty God could place on anything has been placed on you. I broke down, I cried, I cried, I cried out of the vision, cried out of it. I kept crying for three days. Anytime I'm a little alone, I remember this. I start crying. People will wonder what is going wrong with me. I lost appetite for food for a while. I was in this thing. I could not believe. Even when I came back, I wrote all the things. I couldn't believe. It's me. It's me. He said the greatest price that could be. Please put it up. You are not purchased with silver and gold. The Peter was the one writing. But with the precious blood of Jesus, your salvation. That's why in those days you hear me say it. You're looking for anybody to convict for being a Christian, find me guilty. That area I can, is the area of no compromise for me. If it means whatever, no problem. I don't have, you know, there's no whatever about this. Find me guilty. Read it, Pastor Ben, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Yes, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, yes. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, it was life that was used to purchase me. Not just life of any animal or any other person. God's life. Pastor Ben, this is what the Lord told me. He shook me. Even when I got back to school, I would tell them about this. Tell them how valued they are. Tell them about Christ. I will keep this part for a while. Until I got bolder. Because I said, if I tell them, they would think you're crazy. He said, the same value the Father places on me is what he places on you. I said, no, Lord, I cannot accept that one. You are the one that is righteous. You are perfect. You are the son of God. He said, boy, you are now a son of God like me. I said, oh, He said, the father loves you exactly the way he loves me. He said, if I am like you and didn't know the love of my father, I would even be angry that he sacrificed me for you. I would think he loves you more than me because I'm the one he gave up in order to have you. Did you hear what I just said? He said, I knew the love of my father, so going to the cross was not a problem for my brothers. If I didn't, if I was in your state, 
I would think like slaves that were sold away in exchange for something. That he just gave, gave up on me to have this boy. Please put it up. Let them see it. I think the scriptures will also help them. Because when I started checking the Bible and saw that these things were in the Bible, I was shocked. I thought, I, 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 at least, I know I don't read the Bible so much, but I thought at least I had an idea what was inside. I didn't think this kind of things would be found in the Bible. That God loves me the same way he loved Jesus. Put it up. There are many scriptures on that. That they will know that you love them just like you love me. Look at John 17 to 3. Read it for them to see. This is Jesus talking. And guess what? He's having this discussion with the Father. He's praying for us. And look at what he said. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Everybody join me. Let's read this verse. Verse 23, John 71 to go. I in, in them, them thou in me, in me that, that they, they may be made, made perfect, perfect in one. one. That the world may know that you have sent me. And that you love them as you have loved me. Jesus said to me, I should be the one being jealous. Sharing the special place I have with my father with you. But I'm not. I know that that is the truth. That the father loves you. You don't know what this does to a young man. That the father loves you exactly the way he loves me and then he keeps making one statement everyone he finishes he will make one statement he said this is the same for all my children they don't know that's why the enemy is taking advantage of them and asking you now to go and help them to know Because I live, you shall live also. Because I'm alive, you are alive in me. It's years after I now came across that book by Ken Hagen called In Him. If you go through the Bible and look at all the In Him scripture, in Him, in whom we have redemption through His blood, in whom that, in whom all the things that belong to us in Christ. And then, of course, the last is the E, which is the engagement. And this engagement, when he said that, I was thinking about his marriage or engagement like that, he said, no. He said, responsibility. He said, just like the Father sent me, so send I you. That's the John 20, 20. Now you know that the Father loves you like he loves me. He values you like he values me. That's why he bought you with my value. He bought you with my life. You were purchased with my life, not with silver and gold. My life is your inspiration. I'm your model. You are to follow in my footsteps. And you are accepted. Just like I'm accepted. Now, the assignment the Father gave me is your assignment. My mission is your mission. Don't wait to have a calling. You are already engaged. As my father has sent me, so send I you. Read it. Let them see. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. So I, I explained to the Lord that I'm still a child. I'm still a, a teenager. And that I have time that I, when I finish, I'll go to university. When I graduate, I will now do his work. He said, no. He said, the work has already started. That you don't need any special time to start. Now you're a teenager. Start reaching teenagers. When you go to university, start reaching university students. Start reaching people of your class and people of your influence. And from there, you will grow into all the other things. I was thinking, okay, when I finish, I will graduate. So I can now go around the world and preach and tell everybody. He said, no, 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 no. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, I have ordained strength 
because of the enemy and the avenger that they might steal it and stop it. He said, Do you remember what I told Jeremiah? Say not I'm a child. Whatever I, wherever I send you, you go. To whosoever I send you, you go. And whatever I tell you, you speak. Fear not their faces for I will be with you to deliver thee. He said, when it comes to me manifesting myself through you, it has nothing to do with whether you are a graduate or not, or whether you are big or small. It has nothing to do with it. Just yield yourself. Just say yes. I cried so much because I was a very shy person. You don't know. I've gone through a lot of transformation. You know, even all these years, even those that met me in Enugu, you can't find me where people are eating. I can't, I don't eat. I can't. I might be the one to provide the food. I will escape. Very, very shy. But then I realized that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. <laughs> For it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. Especially when he made known to me that your job is to represent me before men while my job is to represent you before my father. You be bold to talk about me. I will introduce you to all the heavenly angels and before my father. When you pray, I will make sure that you get the attention and the answer to whatever when you pray in my name. That's why I have been engaged since that time. I have been on the go since that time. I have been on the go since 12. Nobody discovers Jesus and keeps it to himself. If you keep it, it's because you have not discovered I'm accepted in the beloved just like he is accepted. He is my inspiration. He is my model. I don't need to worry about it. All I have to do is looking unto Jesus, follow in his footsteps. When I make a mistake, I check what he did and use it to correct myself. I'm loved just like he is loved. I'm valued. Do you know what God said concerning you? He said, he that touched you, touched the apple of his eyes. Talking about marriage, he said, it's the same way when a man is joined to a woman, he becomes one flesh. He said, we are flesh of his flesh, bone of his bones. Jesus looks after us better than the way you look after your own body. And now he has engaged me in his mission. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Ladies and gentlemen, you might be watching from around the world, from whatever nation you are watching. I bring you the heart of your Father, the heart of Jesus tonight. This is the truth. This is actually the true condition of things. It is life that is beating us up and down. The enemy blinds us to this reality. So we think that God doesn't care. We think that God doesn't love. And because of that, our faith is crippled and dwarfed. And then we find it hard reaching out to him. We find it hard getting what we need in our lives. We find our life filled with struggle because we don't know. If you're a young man and a young woman watching me from anywhere, the Lord said to me, There's no young man that would discover these truths, and his life, his heart will not be set ablaze. There is a transforming power of love. Before we start talking about the power of God, anointing, and all the other things, let's talk about love. There is a transforming power of God's grace, it's unmerited favor. It's undeserved. It's not because you are righteous. It's not because you qualify yourself. It's not because you merited it. It's not because you earned it. It's because of God's love, God's compassion, God's grace. 
that is released towards you in Christ. Because Jesus took your place, canceled your debts, paid for your sin, wiped them. Now God can accept you and receive you and shower his kindness upon you like never before. You may be one of those who have been caught up in these struggles. You want to earn God's love, you cannot earn it. You want to earn his favor, you can't earn it. It is yours because of Jesus. You've been sick. You've been trying to see if God can show you and heal you. No, you don't have to beg. Jesus purchased it for you. Jesus purchased it. Everybody lift up your hands. Tell the Lord. You know, what he did for me is that I fell in love with the Lord with everything in my being. There was no reservation. I poured my heart. I cried out so much. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. He said, stop apologizing. You are accepted. You are cleansed. You are redeemed. If you have not given your life to Christ, this is the moment when you do it. You cannot say no to such love. You cannot say no to such depth of acceptance. You cannot say no. Tell him, I give you my heart my all, my everything. Take all of me. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness and use me for your glory. I am all yours, Lord. Have my heart, have my life. I place it in your hand. You are the best person to have it. You gave your life for me. I give you my all. Take it all. Change me into your likeness. And use me to reveal yourself to my generation. That's when I started praying like that. There was no reservation anymore. Nothing left anymore. I, I threw it all down at the altar. Then ask the Lord to give you a revelation. A personal revelation of him. A personal revelation of his love for you. A personal revelation. Nothing has hindered us more than the absence of that truth. The Lord said, I should tell everybody here, this night, every form of reproach in your life is being rolled away. And every sin and everything that has touched you is being wiped away. Every reproach. Those things you remember you are ashamed of. Those things other people remember about you. You feel deeply embarrassed. God is rolling it away for your life permanently. God is going to turn you to a specimen of his kindness and of his love. People want an example of somebody that God loved. They will come and say, look at that one. I wish I can enjoy the amount of favor that God is showering on her. That is how your story will be from this night. Lord, stamp this revelation in the heart and mind and soul of every man and woman here tonight and those that have listened to us from around the world stamp it and then bring about the transformational effect of the weight of these truths bring healing to the inward man Fix the broken parts of every man's life. Remove the unbelief, the guilt, the sense of unworthiness that has plagued many of your children. Those things that have crippled their faith that are not able to function in the joy of the Lord. Bless every one of them with that peace that passes all understanding. That blessed assurance 
that sense of security that comes from the knowledge of your love destroy permanently the voice of accusation from the enemy who is the accuser of the brethren the voice of condemnation the voice of accusation and then cause the faith of your children to come alive again cause a fresh hunger for you to erupt in their soul let the past be rolled away like a dark cloud let the blood of Jesus erase it and wipe it away let a new beginning start for everyone let garments that have been dirtied by sin be removed and the fresh garments of righteousness be placed on your people we thank you for open heaven in this place anyone that came into this service this evening sick tormented afflicted with pain in their body i rebook it to live now in the name of jesus the son of god satan your hold has been broken you know you have lost the battle now i rebook you with all your torments to leave every one of these ones from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet let them be made whole the ones that are hurting inside let them be made whole emotionally the ones that have pains in their spirit in their hearts let them be set free from that thank you lord because whom the son of god has set free is free indeed and whom jesus has justified no one can condemn and whom god has blessed no one can cause i declare you blessed i declare you justified i declare you free in the name of jesus go home with joy go home with liberty go home with a spring in your feet the son of god has set you free no one can put you down shout hallelujah shout hallelujah Whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. No devil can hold you again. No devil can torment you again. The one that you saw harass you have authority over him. You know, that's the last thing Jesus said to me. He said, because you are now engaged with my mission, my authority is now with you. You have the right to use my name. You have the right to use my name. You have the right to sign signatures on my behalf. And heaven will back it up. And he reminds me again, this is true. The same principle is true for all my children. The enemy has cheated us long enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This is the discovery. The discovery for recovery. This week, all of the things that belong to you will be unlocked. Nobody can hold you down again. Not sickness, not disease. Hey! There is a lady that came here, you have sickle cell. And you have had fear that you won't live long. I just have an announcement for you. Your DC has been changed to AA. Go back to the doctors and verify you will see. Jesus said, I should tell you, because I live, you shall live also. Hey! You see the sea. Hey! You see so I can walk.